Hello my crafty friends, Corin here from Corin Crafts. I hope you are well. Have I got a beautiful project for you tonight? Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that, the blue going down to next to nothing. That glitter on the snowflake. It is wow. I am loving this. I hope you like this. I'm going to show you how to make it. It's really, really easy. Brilliant for upscaling if you've got lots of cards to make. If you really struggle with the background, I'm sure you'll be able to use some sort of pre-made or pre-decorated paper on the back. So should we get straight in and see how it's made? Because I think this is beautiful. My thinking behind this card was keep it really simple it's not a clean and simple because it's going to you can see already i've got two colored inks here it's not about keeping it clean and simple but it's keeping it simple and the card is going to be a single color and white of course but it's going to be a single color we're going to have blue and i'm going to actually blend these two together so um i'm using crafters companion duet ink pads they are a hybrid water-based ink pad if you've got tim holtz distress oxide you could be using those or just a regular water um based ink pad i actually did think about using maybe a quick dry ink pad because that would also work i just thought it might be a bit harder to blend it out at the end so i decided to go for something that's quite quite blendable now i've got a piece of card that's four and three quarter inches by six i know four by six is quite standard but i quite like it a little bit chunkier so four and three quarters by six and i'm just going to get my ink pads now this one is my paler color but i actually found that if i put this one on first i got a bit more depth now i've got myself a new blending mat who did i see using one of these i think it might have been our luke collins using it and i was like yep this is definitely what i need a blending mat a proper blending mat not something that would possibly work but a proper blending mat i'm not not getting anywhere with that one so i'm just going to get my dauber pick it up your blending mat allows your inks to last to stay wet for longer and it's just going to help you to blend now this is just a watercolor cardstock you might find you get a better results with a stamping card because it's smoother it's not as textured use what you want so all i'm doing here is just adding a bit of color to the background we're going to make it a lot darker really strange but sometimes if you put a lighter color on underneath if you've done any of your coloring you know how putting one color underneath affects the color of another i could be putting maybe a gray under here just to enhance the blue that i'm going to be putting on so there's my paler blue with a bit of my old blue on the um dauber but that's okay and i'm not worried about that so i'm then gonna, that was waterfall so i'm going to now put my midnight mist on which is the one i'm going to be using the most of so i'm going to put plenty on and then i'm just going to blend over the top now i am before i forget i am going to grab myself my cloth and hold with my cloth because if you don't you get mucky fingerprints as corinne has found out to her cost so just taking the ink off there if you find it easier to put your dauber straight on to the ink pad then go for it. So I, I'm actually going to change my dauber back to my blending brush in a minute. Let's have a go. I'm just trying to get a bit of colour laid down, almost to saturate the card. Right, so I've got that bit down. Let's come in with here. Let's go back to my brush because I was getting quite good results. Yes. Once I've got a bit of colour, so I want really intense at the top. And then we're going to literally blend it away to nothing. And I just found that the paler blue really helps to, um, well, it adds layers, it adds depth. But also when we sort of do a bit of faux bleach into it, it also helps to add that interest. So I'm just trying to make sure it's nice and deep colour at the top. And then we're going to blend down. So we are going to blend down to nothing. So you can just keep going. So take it and blend and then just blend out a little bit more so i want to make sure that when i get to about here it's pretty pale and you see i've got a little bit of a cloud there because i didn't didn't blend first i went straight on so we can do this right i'm gonna just sort of shut up talking for a minute and just do a little bit because it takes a minute and i can then speed it up so that you can see
Okay, and once I've got a nice blend and I've blended it out, so it's much, much paler at the bottom. And I don't know if you just saw, what I then did was with the residue ink, I've just gone over the white. So I'm not really adding colour, but I'm taking away some of the whiteness. If I just bring another piece of card in, when I bring that in, you can see that's not pure white anymore. We're just adding a little bit, you know, sort of a hint of blue on there. So I'm going to take that away. I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to wipe my board down. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to bring this back in and I'm just going to spray a tiniest little bit of water on it. It's water reactive. So it will just, oh, I didn't mean it to be that big. Okay, got some bigger spots than I intended. Okay, that's fine. So we'll give that a second. I'm not going to go too long because I've got some bigger spots, but that's okay. It's all in the process. You can't go wrong with this. So let those do. Put a bit of paper towel on and you can see where it's picking it up. It's picking up the big bits. So we've got quite a lot of bigger bits, but we've also got some smaller bits. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. I want some white on there. So our Jan recommended that I got an acrylic paint so i just put a tiny little bit on my mat really is the smallest bit squirt it with a bit of water and then i'm going to grab a paintbrush i'm going to really dilute that down so i've got the intensity of the color with it being an acrylic paint you could just get one of those little samples you don't have to have as big one as i've got so that's a nice white and then i'm just going to flick on there you need it runny to flick you're not going to be able to get flicks from the original acrylic that's fine that's all i need on there okay so take that away now all you need to do then is let that dry so you can see this is so simple we've got one color with a little blue and a little bit of white now i have got some bigger white um blit faux beach on this one than the one i'm going to show you but it works whichever way you do but isn't that absolutely gosh it's like a christmasy night isn't it i'm absolutely loving that with all the stars in the sky so let that one dry but just in tv magic here's one i prepared earlier as i said it's not got the big white bits but it's got some lovely little white speckles on there some of them are the faux be bleach and some of them are the ink so i really really love that oh my mat stuck down okay so next thing i want to do is i'm going to bring in my card base so i took a seven inch card base and i just cut it down and onto there i'm going to pop a piece of blue glitter card now you'll see i've taken out the center did that very deliberately and you'll see why in a minute because i wanted to use that and i wanted to keep what i'm using to a minimum so it's all about a simple color a little bit of glue on the back of there that is a tad little too little bit there and i'm going to pop that down now these are with lots and lots of height and layers you know sometimes i can do cards with lots and lots of layers but not this time so we've got the blue glitter on here i'm then going to take the watercolor card with the ink on and i'm just putting it onto a regular piece of white card it's not even my um 350 it's probably about a 240 um i just wanted that white layer and i'll show you why i know i've put blue on here but i'll show you if i was to put this straight onto there can you see we lose it I'm just going to pop that. I should have shown you that before I glued it down, didn't I? It was in my head, but I forgot to actually mention it. So let's just press that down. There we go. Now, do you remember I said at the beginning, use your cloth to hold it or you'll get a blue mark? It's not a problem. I've come up with a solution. You know, in other cutting, when you're doing your other cards, non Christmassy, it's like, oh, if you make a mistake, stick a butterfly on it. Well, obviously. I don't think a butterfly is going to work on my Christmas card, but I've got a solution. So sticks to foam roll every time. I'm going to grab a piece of this. It's about two mil, so it's really nice height. Put it onto my card. So this is on the back of those two layers. So this is my watercolour card layer that's got the ink on and my white card layer so really really simple do you know what sometimes we try to over complicate these things don't we we try to make them too complicated add too many colors textures i'm not saying that you shouldn't that can look absolutely amazing but sometimes we just want really simple now this you know when we're doing christmas we need to be able to scale it up we need to be able to do quite a few now all i've done with this is a bit of 
blending. So it really isn't overly complicated at all. I'm even going to risk it not putting my glue on my foam tape because I trust myself. Now, can you see the difference by putting that white layer in, how it makes this one pop? Really, really does. Now, I've seen some people would do that straight onto their card base. I do like a few mats and layers, but you can see, and you can see how this isn't perfect white. It's just that colour blended down. I actually can see the two colours a bit more on this one, and I really like that as well. Okay, we're going back to our old faithfuls. We're going back to our snowflakes. I only have one set of snowflakes, so I'm sorry if you're getting bored with them, but I only have one really good set, and, and I'm all about using what you've got. So I've cut the largest one out of white, and you saw that bit of blue was missing, and I've cut the next one down out of my glitter card. It cut perfectly it really wasn't a problem so i've put a few foam pads on the back now these are quite big ones these are about a three or a four mil these are a six two one just work really well um just to give it a little bit of lift now you saw i did a project recently where i used the one with the floating um now that could go that way or that way oh decisions decisions now sorry i thought I'm going to go that way. Let me just line it up so I make sure it's straight, otherwise it's going to look awful and centred. There we go. Right. Um, what was I saying? Ugh. Oh, yes, I made the floating snowflake on a shaker card and I used double-sided adhesive foam. You could be doing that as well if you don't like foam pads. I, This is the bit I don't like about foam pads, taking all these backs off. It's just a pain, isn't it? absolute pain because i've cut them if they were whole i would just stab them and the backs would come off but they're not whole i've had to cut down therefore they as soon as you start to cut into your foam pads it's just that little bit harder i mean these six two ones do come away lovely and easily but any foam pad the minute you start cutting into it, it just makes taking off that back a little bit harder just because you've beveled the edge of the um they're, they're, they're cut in such a way when they make foam pads so that the backs come off the minute you start cutting into your foam pads you're altering that and um yeah it just makes it a bit harder now i've actually just taken all of this off you could only you could just take off a few of those if you wanted to you've seen me do that before right now i look at this and i was going to put it that way but then it hides that fleur de lis so i'm going to put it the big onto the big and then i'm just going to try and center it up if you wanted to, you could stagger it, but I just think that's like that. Now, my plan was to put a sentiment across there. I've made a mucky mark on my card, so I'm going to use my sentiment. So what I did, and I, I haven't stuck this down because I wanted to show you. I've got a new set of sentiment stamps, woodware ones. These are really useful. Just nice typeface sentiments, really simple, nothing fancy. Because when you've got a card as beautiful as this... Yes, I've got some beautiful, beautiful, fancy fonts and sentiments, but I just want something really simple. So I stamped out Merry Christmas and I cut it out. Then I wanted to cut my matte layer out. So what I did was I put a little bit of double-sided um, my glue pen on, um, dotty tape pen on. Gosh, can't get my words out. And I just put that on there to hold it in place so that I could work out where to cut. And it also meant I wasn't sticking it down. If I made a mistake in the cutting... I could peel my sentiment off. There's so many times when I've stuck my sentiments onto the mat layer to trim them down. I've made a mistake in the trimming and then I've lost my sentiment and I've had to stamp again. The stamping is the hardest bit, isn't it? So you can see I've got dotty tape on the back of there because I did that again to put it onto here. I think that goes that way around. There. And I've just moved that top layer. Look, I've got no border on that end because I've just moved it got quite a bit of glue on there let's just get that back into a better place because it's um glitter card it's got a coating on and that coating means that it's just going to take a little bit longer for the tacky glue to absorb oh just cut that too long but never mind so back to the same sticks to foam roll take that just trim that off because I've gone a little bit big. I can stick that back on the roll to use later. Oop. And then I can take this. Now, as I said, I was going to put this across the centre. And I think that looks lovely. Really do. And I still like that. I've made a mark. So all I'm going to do is, yep, put that over there. Change of plan. Now, 
it's still missing something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with some some clear Aurora Borealis um, gems. So I can put one in the middle, which I can do now because I've not put the sentiment there. And then I'm just going to grab my tweezers and I'm just going to put a few around the outside here. Around the outside, as I say, all the way. I'm not going to count because otherwise I'm going to I'm going to get so stung up on how many. And I'm just going to put those there. And that is all I'm going to do. Isn't that beautiful? I'm so happy with that. One colour Christmas card. So simple, so effective. The mats and layers really, really make it for me. But how about that? I absolutely love it. Blend that ink down, bring it down, just give it a few splats, a few little twinkles just to lift. But I think the glitter card works really well. Um, how about that? Do you love it? I do. I'm really, really happy. I'm tempted to have a go at doing it in different colours. I'm thinking a rich burgundy plum colour would look lovely. You could do it in green. You could do it in red. Whatever inks you have, please, please have a look at what you've got. And it doesn't have to be snowflakes. It could be anything. If you've got a nesting Christmas shape, then have a go at that. Look at my fingers all white. Um, There you go. I hope you like that. So there we are, I'm going to leave it now. As always, I'll be putting links down at the bottom. I know I've got one more Christmas card in me. Have I got two? And the next one is going to be, I'm going to say it out loud, then I've got to do it. It's going to have my flower forming foam on because I love it and I know you like that. I'm going to make it into a Christmas card. So please don't forget to come back. If you want to see that with a flower forming foam, don't forget to click the subscribe and if possible, click the notification bell and then you will find out because I always let people know when my videos are out. So until next time, my friends, thank you for watching. Please leave a comment in the bottom. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.